sit down, enjoy as we go over this week in news. And let's get right to it in our reality check. America's teachers on strike. Yes, indeed, America, it is true. On Mondays, teachers all across Oklahoma plan to walk out to demand better pay and school funding. Taking action, Oklahoma joined a growing nationwide movement protesting rock bottom pay for teachers. Currently, the state falls at the very bottom of a list of states ranked by teacher pay. According to CNN, some schools have been forced to scale back to four days of class per week and use textbooks held to together with duct tape. Many teachers rely on food banks and work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. America, we've got a serious problem on our hands and Oklahoma isn't alone. This week we also saw teachers in Arizona take to the streets to demand better for their students and for themselves. We also saw teachers in Kentucky take to the streets to demand better for their students and themselves. All of these teachers are inspired and empowered by what they saw take place in West Virginia when teachers went out for almost 11 days for demanding better for themselves and their teachers. And this movement, America, is not over because rumor has it, we here at the Fowler Show on Good Sources say that the state of Tennessee might be next as teachers there begin to organize as they might shut down their schools as they demand better. America, it is a populist movement. Teachers everywhere are standing up and they're fighting back. Now, before I get to why they're doing this, and I think it's really important that we talk about that, let's listen to this week's protest and let's listen to what some of these educators had to say. As a classroom teacher, I know firsthand what cuts look like. This is our movement. Let's continue fighting for our students together. We can make the state of Oklahoma what we desire it to be. We're out here for funding for our schools. We would gladly give up a raise to have the money for textbooks and smaller class sizes and be able to do the things that these kids deserve to get the best education. I couldn't have said it better myself. Now, here's the thing. For decades, we have seen an all-out war against public education, right? Funded by the Koch brothers, funded by folks like Betsy DeVos, we have seen an all-out war against something that all Americans used to believe in, the ideal of public schools being a, a, a good, a common good, something that everybody believed in, that every American would go to a good, high-quality neighborhood public school, and they'd be able to have the basics in math, writing, reading, and arithmetic. Now here's what's happened since then. Since then, we've seen Republican legislatures and Republican governors slash and burn public education funding to fund tax giveaways for millionaires and billionaires. In the state of Oklahoma, they've used this money to fund fracking and to give tax giveaways to oil companies. And in exchange, they've sacrificed the state's future, its students. And teachers have been the ones who've had to bear the brunt of it. And I mean, and the videos and the pictures are shocking. And this isn't new. I mean, I've seen this firsthand. I will never forget um, the year I spent in the city of Detroit and walking into classroom after classroom and looking at textbooks that still said George W. Bush was president in 2010 or walking into computer labs where thanks to Dell, the, they, the students were given free computers, but the computer lab had no internet. Or walking into bathroom, female bathrooms with no stall doors. Or walking into bathrooms where the toilets had fallen through the roof. Or walking into classrooms in the dead of winter where I felt like I was standing outside. America, our public schools in this country have reached a disaster point. And it's not because of teachers' unions, and it's not because of democratically ruled cities, it's not because of any of these things. It's because we as a country have lacked the will to fund public education. 
And, and, it's, and truth be told, many of us have missed it. We haven't been paying attention, folks. So while we have been caring about making ends meet for our families, state legislature after state legislature has slowly but surely been making cuts to public education budgets. And we really didn't notice it at first. Because at first it was just, oh, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting the arts because we can't afford it. Then it was we're cutting music. We're cutting, we're gonna cut art, we're gonna cut music. Okay, now we're gonna downside, we're not gonna buy textbooks this year because we can't afford it. We're only gonna buy textbooks every other year. Then it became we're gonna lay off a couple of teacher assistants. Then it became we're gonna lay off a couple of teachers. Then it became we're not gonna raise pay this year. There's gonna be a hiring freeze. And before you know it, before you know it, we have literally created situations where we're pushing our children into schools that are literally falling apart at the seams. And that is what's happening in the state of Oklahoma. Teacher salaries haven't changed in 10 years, and lawmakers have slashed the education budget to almost a third over the past decade. A third of what it was in over, in over the past decade. Educators are going ahead with their protest despite a recent bill to increase their pay slightly. On Thursday, Governor Mary Fallon signed, a law, uh, signed into law a raise for teachers and support staff, plus a $50 million total increase in funding for public education in the state. But it wasn't enough for teachers, as it sh and of course it shouldn't have been. $50 million after a decade of not properly funding public education, you think $50 million is gonna be enough to fix a problem that has been a decade in the making? Really? Come on, girl. And here's what, one, here's what the president of the Oklahoma Education Association estimated that the school system needs $200 million to adequately fund this situation. But I mean, to add insult to injury in this particular in this particular case is that after as these teachers continued to protest, here is what Miss Fallon, the governor of Oklahoma, said to these educators that toil. Now, mind you, being an educator in the United States of America is one of the most thankless jobs, one of the most heroic jobs. These people are heroes. They go to work every day and they educate our young people. No matter the odds, Monday through Friday they're there to deal with the social and emotional needs of our students. They deal with our students no matter what. They deal with our students no matter how our students come to school and some of our students come to school in dire straits. But here's what the governor said. These teachers are kind of like having a teenager, a teenage kid that wants a better car. No, Miss Governor, these teachers are not like teenagers who want a better car. These teachers are literally, they've been holding together Oklahoma's public education system with spit and some duct tape for the past decade. The reason why the kids in Oklahoma can read and write and do arithmetic, even though you haven't spent any money on textbooks, is because these teachers go the extra mile. They haven't complained. They haven't, they haven't moaned. They go to work every day and they fight for their kids. No matter what, they're there. And after a decade of standing up for their students, they finally said, enough is enough. Our kids deserve better. And thus they've decided to take to the streets. And their students stand behind them. Hell, in many of the counties in Oklahoma, their superintendents stand behind them, and their school boards stand behind them, and their students stand behind them, and their parents stand behind them. Why? Because all these groups of people understand what these teachers have been going through for the past decade. They get it that for the past decade, Madam Governor and state legislators, you guys have chosen to underfund the public schools in Oklahoma to the point of peril. To the point where you have created a situation that is literally, you have subjected the students of Oklahoma to a life of poverty by not funding public education. But now these teachers have found their voice and they're raising their voice. And their voice deserves to be heard. But they aren't alone. They have joined a movement of educators all across this country saying, we have had enough.
because well, here's what these educators do every week. They care, they show up, and most importantly, they fight. And so hey, at the Fowler Show, we've got their backs. And so do millions of other Americans.